Hello, Sherlock reporting at duty. The case seems tough, but no scare when Sherlock is here. Tuberculosis (TB) is one of the oldest known human diseases, and it is still one of the major causes of mortality since 2 million people die each year from this. TB in humans can be traced back to 9000 years ago. TB primarily is a pulmonary disease that is initiated by the deposition of Mycobacterium tuberculosis contained in aerosol droplets onto the lung alveolar surfaces. TB has many manifestations affecting bone, the central nervous system and many organ system. But progression of the disease can have several outcomes determined largely by response of the host immune system. The last 20 years have seen a renewed interest on TB by health authorities and the governments which has resulted in halving of TB deaths. The continued survival of Mycobacterium tuberculosis (MTB) depends upon transmission among humans. This is best accomplished by producing a cavity in the lung for proliferation of massive numbers of MTB to be coughed into the environment over a period of decades while the host remains healthy enough to circulate in the community. Events in TB All starts from the exposure of individuals to droplet nuclei from a source case of open TB. Now, depending upon the duration and intensity of exposure and the immunologic difference, infection may or may not occur. If there is a weak protective immune response, then this progresses to uncontrolled bacterial growth, which is called as primary progressive TB. If there is a strong protective immune response, then there is limited bacterial growth. If the bacterial growth is arrested and all the bacilli are eliminated, This is called as sterilizing immunity. If the bacterial growth is arrested but some bacilli persist, then this is a case of latent infection. Now, if there is the immune response is compromised, then the reactivation of latent infection occurs. If the immune response persists and weaning of dormant bacilli occurs, then clearance of the latent infection occurs. Diagnosis of TB. First, we do a chest X-ray to rule out or in the presence of active disease in all screening test positive cases. There is fluffy upper zone shadowing, frequently bilateral and often associated with shadowing. Then we do a acid fast staining. We use the Ziel-Nielsen technique. Then there is culture methods: Lovenstein Jensen medium and automated liquid culture. Then the last we use do we do is we will clear amplification test like gene expert line probe assay for detecting resistance to anti tubercular drugs. In this example, you can see the fluffy upper zone shadowing in the chest X-ray. Here's the case. Here are the investigations. Here are the questions. The diagnosis of my case is multi-drug resistant TB. Differentials associated with MDR TB are non-tubercular Mycobacterium infection (NTM) or Mycobacterium avium complex (MAC) infection, pneumonia, malignancy, and fungal infection. Non-tubercular Mycobacterium. It is very important to make this differential because both Mycobacterium tuberculosis and non-tubercular Mycobacterium have different line of treatments. and it is very difficult to make this differential also because they cannot be differentiated on the basis of sphere microscopy as both are acid fast bacilli and give positive zeal nielsen stain test so we introduce the nucleic acid amplification naa for differentiation of mycobacterium tuberculosis and non tubercular mycobacterium it is usually suspected when initial course of anti tb treatment has not shown the desired response but Here in this case the patient recovered from the TB 6 months back pneumonia malignancy and fungal infections all are very important differentials but they can be ruled out using smear microscopy mycobacterium tuberculosis is an acid fast bacilli and it gives positive zn stain test certain other fluorescent staining techniques such as oramin phenol are used for sputum smear nowadays this is how the sputum smear shows On the left you can see the zn stain. You can see long slender and beaded red colored acid fast bacilli colonies. On the right you can see the oramin phenol staining and the tubercle ba- bacilli appear bright brilliant green against dark background. Resistance exhibited by Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Rifampin resistant TB. 
Second is the monodrug resistant TB which is resistant to first line drugs other than rifampin. Polydrug resistant TB. In this, Vesela is res resistant to more than one first line drugs other than rifampin. Fourth is the isoniazid resistant TB. Fifth is multidrug resistant TB, MDR TB. The strain is resistant to rifampin and isoniazid both. Sixth is extensive drug resistant TB, XDR TB. These are MDR TB cases which are resistant to at least four most effective sidle drugs with isoniazid, rifampin, fluoroquinone, and one of kyanamycin, amikycin, and captiomycin. Approach to the diagnosis. Symptoms of the patient. The patient presents with dry cough, fever, reduced appetite, and weight loss. Reinfection and the previous history of TB. Reinfection and previous history of TB emphasizes on the development of drug resistant TB. Investigations. Raised ESR, which depicts the inflammatory process. Chest x ray. A non homogeneous enhancing right upper lobe lesion is found. Bronchoalveolar lavage. AFB, acid fast basal is found on ZN staining. Line probe assay. Mycobacterium tuberculosis complex with resistance to rifampicin and isoniazide is confirmed. True cut lung biopsy. So granulomatous inflammation suggestive of fulminable TB is confirmed. Management of the case. Standard RNTCP regimen for MDR TB suggests an intensive phase which is of 6 to 9 months should comprise of canamycin, levofloxacin, ethionamide, cycloserine, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol which is then followed by continuation phase which is of 18 months which consists which should consist of levofloxacin, ethionamide, cycloserine and ethambutol. The case has been solved and Sherlock is always correct.